It feels like Christmas where Stack Overflow is Santa Claus and I've been a very good boy this year. So as a reward, my arch nemesis, AngularJS, has been crowned the most dreaded framework of 2020. And I'm not even kidding this time. I've been jesting about Angular, but today we got cold hard facts. According to the 2020 Stack Overflow survey, 75.9% of developers dread Angular. Yes, you heard that right. Three out of every four developers dread Angular. And I'm actually really proud of Angular here. It had to work very hard to get first place and earn the honor of the most dreaded framework. It was in a neck and neck race with Drupal, which is quite the competitor given how trash of a framework it is. But Angular found a way to pull ahead and well, be an even worse framework. So I gotta give it kudos for that. Angular does such a great job of being dreaded that it shows up in the most dreaded framework list twice. Some of the developers may actually hate Angular, but just to clarify my stance on the issue, I actually don't personally hate Angular. But as a React developer, it is required by my religion to detest it. Anyway, that was the highlight of the Stack Overflow survey for me, but there were a couple other points that were mildly interesting. TypeScript was the number two most loved language and it even beat out Python somehow, which I was very surprised to see. Like TypeScript is a very polarizing language. I personally love it, but there's a ton of people that really hate it. And so I was surprised to see this level of love. So it looks like the TypeScript results are currently taking over the web dev community, which is awesome. If you haven't made up your mind about it, I definitely recommend giving it a try. I didn't think I was gonna like TypeScript at all, especially cause I didn't like Java and it kind of looked like Java, but it turns out it makes web development like way better and it's way better than trying to derp around with JavaScript. And it turns out it's just like way less boilerplate than Java. And now that I've used TypeScript for a while, I'm kind of starting to get addicted to statically typed languages. Like I really like auto completion and seeing type info. And it's really, really hard for me to go back to JavaScript or Python and try to build anything serious with it now. On a slightly different note, it was kind of puzzling to see ASP.NET Core as the number one most loved web framework. I know nothing about the C Sharp world, so I'm not sure what the heck is going on there, but I saw that C Sharp, the language itself, is kind of a mildly loved language. It's not the very top or the very bottom. It's kind of sitting in the middle with JavaScript, about the same level. But I did see that ASP.NET is the among the most dreaded web frameworks. So Microsoft must have done something really right to turn things around with whatever ASP.NET core is. I'm mildly intrigued by this. So if you do use the framework, I'm curious. Let me know in the comments, what do you actually love about this? Also, while we're talking about frameworks, I'd like to voice a complaint to the Stack Overflow team that it's very insensitive to stick React.js under the framework label. That is a rookie mistake because we all know React is a library and not a framework. And these are totally different things. A helpful visual that I like to use to just keep these concepts clear in my mind is to think of React the library kind of like a Maserati, whereas the framework Angular is kind of like a garbage truck. All right, onward to the next statistic. So Stack Overflow says almost 85% of respondents that our professional developers feel that formal education is at least somewhat important, which is contrary to the popular idiom that you don't need to have formal education to become a developer. This is kind of a vaguely worded survey question, but a lot of times when a developer says formal education is important, they mean it's important to get a job, not that it's important to become a good developer or a good programmer. And that is a very key distinction. You can become a very good developer without going to college or having a formal education by self-studying and using online resources. And a lot of time, the people that are going to college are also in their own time studying these things and using online resources to learn new technologies. For example, I have a computer science degree, but besides the one database class I took, 0% of my web developer knowledge is from classes. I had to learn HTML and CSS and React and TypeScript and the bajillion other tools that you have to know for web development all on my own. So I don't think a formal education is very important or really effective to being a good developer. I think a apprenticeship program or just learning on the job or self-studying is far more effective. The 85% of developers that are saying it is important to have a formal education, I think are referring to either getting a job or an internship to then break into the industry. 
And there, I would agree, it is helpful to have a college degree because there is still a lot of companies that either require a college degree or they have more openings for college grads or they just prefer college grads. I'm not trying to say you can't get a job if you're a self-taught developer, you definitely can, and more companies are starting to see the value in self-taught developers. But at least in the US right now, there's just a greater pool of jobs for college grads. And while we're talking about jobs, you may wanna brush up on your Scala skills because that is the top paying job in the US with a median salary of $150 thousand dollars. I have some friends that use stats like this to decide what technologies they're going to learn and have a career in, which I don't think is the worst idea, but personally I do not subscribe to this methodology. My philosophy is very simple. If you're looking to maximize your salary, you have two different options. Option number one, pick a language you actually enjoy, that way you don't hate your life every single day, and you might actually get good at that language, and then you're not sitting at that median salary you're all the way up here, bro. JavaScript is on the lower end of the salary spectrum, but if you actually enjoy it and get really good at it, you can really start raking in that dough. Probably enough to at least make two pizzas. For example, if you get good enough to land yourself a job at Netflix doing UI engineering, which I assume is probably JavaScript, then you're saying hello to 300 fat ones, which is not too shabby if you ask me. With that said, what if you think you're just gonna be an average developer, no matter what technology you learn, well, should you be learning Scala then if you're wanting to maximize your salary potential? Well, maybe, but you also might wanna consider option number two, which is to learn to talk to other humans. And I know most developers would rather learn Angular and become carrot farmers before talking to another human, especially if that human happens to be from the business department. But assuming you're willing to do that, there is some serious financial gains. The median salary of a engineering manager is $152,000 in the United States, which is two grand more than those chumps learning Scala. And if you wanna take this a step further, you should really consider the ultimate big brain play, which is to take the two and combine them together. And now you are managing Scala developers. All right, that concludes this episode of Ben Awad's career advice on Scala. Don't forget to tune in next week where we will be talking about how regularly using deodorant can take one's career to the next level.